Hey guys, it's been a busy couple weeks and I haven't put out a Tuesday gallery video in a while and I really don't have time this week. My wife was like, Matthew, just put out something. And I said, no, no, no. She, and, and she's like, just just like point your camera and talk. And I'm like, would you go into the classroom and just be a bad teacher? And she's like, no, but I could plan an easy lesson plan and still do something. So that's a good point. So I'm just going to go tank by tank, give you guys a quick update. No fancy editing here. And hopefully we'll be back next week with something a little more interesting. Tank number one, remember this tank? The Anemone Hospital tank where this lighting fell on it and cracked it. Still broken, so nothing there. 40 gallon breeder tank update. Really, there's a livestock update, a coral update, fish update, and then an update, which you can't see right now, in the sump area. Let's start out with the fish. See if I can zoom you in here. The problem is, the fox face right here, rabbit fish, he is just so big and he really needs a bigger tank. And I would love to get him a 120 or 150 gallon peninsula tank, put it right over here. But, you know, I've just been spending so much money and I want to save some up. So I'm not going to get that right now, but I may have to move the fox face eventually or give him away to another tank because he's so big and I just he just deserves something better. The other fish in here are really doing fine. A couple clownfish are super happy. They're hosting whatever they want, mushrooms. There's one sapphire damsel left, a couple hawkfish. Really not an issue here. The goal with this tank and what I'm going to do eventually is I want to turn this back into a fish quarantine tank. So what I plan on doing for the next tank I'm going to buy is buying a frag tank. I need a place to put all of my frags and I want to separate that from the fish. I'll have a couple fish in there, but I want to be able to treat the fish with medication and then be able to move them. So really, I need to get a frag tank, move all these frags over there. I need to get in my JBJ 45 gallon, which is still on back order to move some of these and place these in there. And then I need to get a 120 gallon or 150, 180 gallon tank for the fish. It'll be a fish only tank. So that's kind of that, but let's take a closer look at the corals real quick. The corals are doing pretty well for the most part. Most of them are quite happy. I've lost a couple over time, but nothing really terrible has happened. Some of them are growing really well and some aren't, like this acan here. I've had this thing for like four months and I can't see any extra heads on it, right? And you look at the frag plug, look at the frag plug here and then to the right with this mushroom with all that algae growth. So that's kind of strange. But then take a peek at this lepto back here. This thing is growing crazy. So it really does depend on the coral. And then there's this one. I can't, I can't even remember what the name of this one is. It like will grow to the left and do really well. And then it will die off on the right hand side, which is kind of strange. And then here's this, what's this called? A man of war or war or hammer cor war coral, something like that, war coral. I need to frag it. It is way overgrown. So I think I just need to slice it into four pieces and maybe give some of those away. But I've just been kind of lazy and haven't gotten around to it. And then we have the Zoas back here. I mean, I, I don't know. They just keep multiplying and growing. And I even made this little Zoa rock. See the Zoa rock? I made the Zoa rock a few months ago. And these Zoas are just going crazy back here. So it's almost time to frag some of these and give some of these away as well. The two mushrooms seem super happy. Uh, this little bubble, bubble, what do you call that? Uh, I, I, you, you guys know how terrible I am. The, 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 this one has a little, the bounce mushroom, there you go. And then that beautiful mushroom, the clowns seem to love to host it now that I've taken all of their euphelia away. And then, I don't remember this one, this bubble coral is gorgeous. Uh, this is, I think it's euphelia as well, right? It wasn't doing well in the other tank because there's too much flow, but in here it's awesome. The only problem with this coral here is I have to watch the flow because it has long stinging tentacles that will go out and sting everything. And then nothing fancy here, just the green toadstool and what do you call this? Not Xenia, something like that though. Uh, I don't know what to do with this one because it basically grows like a weed. It's so big, I might just give it away. But this toadstool, I think I'm gonna take and put it into the new macro algae tank, softy tank. I think it'll be perfect because the seahorses won't bother it and it won't bother the seahorses. Lastly, down in the sump, I, I just have too much going on down here. I have a UV sterilizer. I have this bio pellet reactor, big skimmer. So I just have all these pumps. And the problem with having all of these pumps in the water is when it gets warm in here, and we keep our house at 78, but this room's a little bit warmer, 
I can't keep that temperature uh, below 79. And so I think what I would like to do down here is for now, uh, I, I think just get rid of the bio pellet reactor and I, I, I don't know, maybe get rid of the skimmer or maybe install one DC pump and have it control both UV sterilizer, which is kind of tucked behind here and have it control the refugium pump because right now I'm, I have this pump here, which goes up and into the refugium over here, which seems to be doing fine. I haven't looked at the refugium in forever. It's just growing some of that dragon's breath, that that red macro algae. But it's just super messy. I haven't done anything on this for a long time. So this needs a really good organization. This needs a cleanup, new frag tank, and 120, 180 gallon tank eventually. So that's tank number two. Tank number three, clownfish harem tank. Uh, I don't know what to say, except this is the first time in my career in this hobby in seven years that I've successfully had anemones. Um, it was touch and go at the beginning of this tank. Remember, I had all that death, but for some reason now, everything has settled in and I'm making very minor adjustments. And the things that seem to have helped right? Number one, obviously just stability, just give it a little bit of time. Number two, these rows or whatever, like the rose colored anemones just seem to do better. Bigger rose anemones seem to thrive more. And even my rose anemone, like this one right here, which wasn't doing well is now doing well. And I still have this little watermelon anemone, which is okay. But these green bubble tips Remember I had 10, I have one now and it's pitiful. I just, I don't think it's going to survive. So I don't know why that is. I don't know if you guys have had experience with rose bubble tips or larger bubble tips doing better than smaller or greens, but I'm not messing with it right now. Let me sh take you a couple close ups here of these. So I also have eight clownfish in here and it's so interesting because I've had to move some around. Remember I started with 12 and I had one death. So I still have 11 in the original, but eight in here. And I just, I, I can't reiterate enough how important it is to have habitat for them because they kept being bullied. But once I was able to successfully get a whole bunch of larger anemones, I mean, look at this guy. It, he would have been hiding down there, down there. But since there's an anemone, he seems to be able to just stay in one of the anemones and he's not bullied. So, so having, having a lot of anemones, if I was to do this again, I would add anemones first because if there were more larger anemones at the beginning, I think I could have kept them all in here. And not only there, there, there's seven of what are this? The premium, or the, the black ice, I think they're called. But look at this. This one long fin is doing okay. And it's so strange because he's, I think he's different enough that the other seven clownfish don't bother him. And I would have never guessed that. I would have thought they would have picked on him for sure, but they don't. So there are eight clownfish in here in this basically 40 gallon breeder size tank. I was having a whole bunch of algae problems for the longest time. And, you know, I had green hair algae covering the rocks, but I've, eventually got it under control just by controlling my nutrients, doing a slightly wetter skim and switching from pellet food to frozen food. And now I actually only maintain my, my levels of, of, of nitrate and phosphate by how much I change out my filter sock. So I was getting zero readings for a while and almost no algae growth. So I left my filter sock in for a week. And I did that for a few weeks. And then my phosphate and nitrate jumped way up. So I started changing it every few days. And now the nitrates and phosphates have settled. And I'm finally at the point in this tank where I can judge my nitrates and my phosphates by how much film algae I'm getting. I can tell if I'm getting a lot of film algae growth, it's probably creeping up there. So this tank has really settled in nicely. And I would like to add a few more anemones, but I'm just going to wait for now because everyone is so healthy and happy. The only other thing I've done in this tank is I dose uh, the Red Sea, what do you call it, reef code or whatever it is, the AB plus is what I dose. I dose it every day. And you might be like, but there's no corals in here. I, I don't know, but I'm doing it and it seems to be helping because maybe it's giving certain amino acids or vitamins 
to the anemones, and that's fine with me. And the other thing is I'm dosing the trace elements, the A, B, C, D from Red Sea. I dose them about, <clears throat> I dose them, I'd say, about once, one and a half times a week, and I test my iodine levels about once a month. And I think the iodine levels are definitely helping. When I was testing originally, the iodine levels were definitely on the low side, but now they seem to be doing really well. And I keep up with a water change about every week and a half. And I do, I'd say around a 15% water change. The only other things I have is I have a whole bunch of Sarah snails controlling the sand bed. I have two conches in here and I have a sand sifting goby. So I've never actually touched the sand bed. So, so far, even with all the struggles at the beginning, this is turning into a successful clownfish harem tank. And here's the sump for the clownfish harem tank. Nothing special at all. The only filtration I'm running is a filter sock, and I change that every few days. I have a protein skimmer, which I run constantly, and it seems to keep everything in check. I have some live rock down here and some Fiji mud. That's it. Super simple filtration, and it's working totally fine. Tank number four, the Fluval M60, 24 gallon reef tank, 18 gallons in the display. I just don't like this tank. I I don't know, I, I, I guess I'm just over it. My original aquascape was, was poor, just like basically a little rock formation here, nothing in the middle, and then a rock formation over here. It's really just remained unchanged. It's remained totally unchanged. Livestock wise, I have these two clowns that constantly fight each other. They're both almost the exact same size right now, but I don't see any fin issues. I think they're, they're not nipping each other. As long as I feed them twice a day, they seem to be okay with that. But I think that's a, a, a Wyoming white and then a true percula there, but they seem okay. I, I, I don't know what's going to happen. And then I have two of the PJ Cardinals that are, I mean, I love cardinals, you know, and then in here, I think the only other fish, oh, I have a, a, a some crabs, an emerald crab, and I have a pistol shrimp, which I never see now that the goby died a long time ago. So that's all I really have for fish, not really much to look at, and the tank just looks ugly, I think. I have been dealing with, with cyanobacteria for months and I'm just not treating it. I, I mean, it, it, it's under control. I manually remove it when I need to. And the reason I'm not treating it is because every time I use something like ChemiClean, it disrupts the biological filtration so much that I usually get like a dinoflagellate outbreak. And this is ugly, but it's okay. And as long as it's not growing on the rocks, and it does occasionally grow on the rocks, and I do occasionally get some green hair algae growing on the rocks. So I do have to scrub these down I don't know, once a month or so, but it's not nearly as bad as it used to be. And I am having to change out the filtration a little more. The only filtration I have in this tank is a single sponge. Let me show you. I mean, that's, I, I mean, no joke. That's, I know I've said this before. This is the only filtration I have is this single sponge. So I just rinse it out every few days and I have like three of them cut. But I mean, it's a simple tank. There's really... Nothing difficult about keeping it. I just hate the aquascape. This is not the best place for these corals. I'm probably, I mean, when I get the JBJ45 gallon, I'm going to be moving all of these corals. I mean, I can't move this one, obviously, this SPS here. It's encrusted, so I'll give that away. But I'll move the frog spawn. The leather coral will move into the seahorse tank along with the toadstool. The acans I'll move into the 45-gallon tank, and then I will move all of these hammers into the 45 gallon tank as well. I'm just waiting for that tank to come in. Hopefully it'll come in somewhat soon. Really easy tank to take care of. I just, I just hate looking at it. So I can't wait for this to be gone. Tank number five, the macroalgae seahorse tank. Settling in nicely it is cycling using Dr. Tim's. And uh, it's been cycling for a little over two weeks now and I haven't tested it in about a week, but the ammonia was still quite high. And I didn't even test for nitrites or nitrates yet. So I'm hoping this will settle in soon because then I have Inland Reef and Ben's NEMS. I'm going to buy some macroalgae for them. So the plan, obviously, is to buy... I'm going to get three different shipments of macroalgae, try to try to get a hang of the macroalgae, and then once I get the hang of that and get the bio load dealt with, then I will get the seahorses. So that's the next step here. This sugar fine sand is actually doing okay. It took a little while to get the flow settled because I had a couple problems. The first problem I had was with the return nozzles. See these? 
they were just pointing straight out and they didn't have this lock line tubing on it. So they were blowing away all of this sand right here was just being blown away. So I had some extra lock lines sitting around and I just pointed them one left, one right. The other problem, of course, was I am using this gyre pump on a, on a very, very low setting to try to get a little more flow in here. And it was blowing a little bit of this. And you can still see, it's still really pretty. And, but it, it seems to have settled into this kind of natural looking roll and wave motion. So I think that's gonna be fine. And it's not blowing onto the aquascape before. Before the aquascape was just covered. And so it's not doing that, which is really nice. Not a whole lot to report down below. The tank does have a glass lid on it, so it's running really warm, but I'm not running the chiller right now or the UV sterilizer over here. Water's running through them because I'm just using the same pump, but my plumbing job is holding well, and this thing cools it down easily to 72 degrees, but boy, does this run hot. So for the time being, as soon as I turn this on before I get the macro algae, I think I'm gonna run the tank 73 to 74. So it'll turn on at 74, turn off at 73. But I, I'm going to have to leave this door open. It is super hot in here. So, and 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 I don't want to drill holes on this because this is, I, I mean, this is, has to be a load-bearing wall. But I can drill holes here. So I think what I'll end up doing is uh, putting a couple cabinet fans. And I'll probably put one for uh, the heat coming out here. And I'll have the air blowing this way. And then down here, I'll have it for the cool air going in. That will be an eventual project. Obviously, I still need to organize these wires. I haven't done any of that yet. So this is an electrical nightmare. But we should be just a few weeks away from getting the macroalgae in this tank, which is awesome. Lastly, tank number six. This is the Innovative Marine 14-gallon peninsula. And remember, I built this tank just to house my two long fin clownfish. So let's start by talking about the livestock, specifically the fish. You'll notice that I don't have the two long fins in here anymore. The one long fin that's now in the clownfish harem tank was bullying this long fin to the point where it was near death, I think. Its fins were totally gone, totally gone, and um, which obviously you never, ever want to see. But since putting this long fin clown back in here, if I can ever get focus, you can see there, the fins are growing back. It's not as long as they used to be, but... These two seem to get along just fine. I've never seen an issue with these two, so I guess these two will be the permanent residents of here. Those are the only fish I have. This tank has taken a long time to settle in. I mean, a long time to settle in. It has, for whatever reason, some various algaes growing on it, and annoyingly, it has some cyanobacteria. Seems to just be growing on this rock. I don't know why, but I just brush it off. <clears throat> I just brush it off every time I do a water change and it's not taking over the tank. This tank is finally settling in. I used to have, I mean, seriously, I would, I would algae scrape this glass twice a day and it would still be covered. I've added some snails that I took from the clownfish harem tank over. And finally, I only have to algae scrape this tank. I don't know, once every two or three days now. So it's settling in. And again, the only filtration on this tank is a sponge or a filter sock. That's it. And I have some ceramic media in there. But so far, so good. Only getting frozen food. Seems to be working out well. Let's talk about the corals. I have been having some odd die-offs. And only with these green, speckled, toxic, whatever you want to call them, hammer corals, I've had lost two heads. And this one, you can see here. Here's a head I lost. Back right. No idea why. Tried to frag it. Um, <laughs> and it didn't work. So I just left it in there. And this head seems to be totally okay. And then look down here is where the second head was. And this one is dead as well. But I'm not taking this one out. Because can you see? If I put it close, see if I can look there to the right. There are two or three heads growing. So I'm going to leave that in there. Because as long as those survive, we'll have two or three frogs. Sorry, two or three hammer corals in, I don't know, a couple of years time. And... Then let's talk about this frog spawn, which was doing terribly in here. I mean, I, I, the position was awful. I hated where it was. It wasn't getting the right flow. And I think it was somehow being affected by this one. As soon as this head died off, this thing had started puffing out really well. So I'm struggling a little bit with placement of corals on here. But this one's doing better. Everyone that's on there is doing better. Now we have this 
Oh my god, what is this one called? I forget the name of it. This pink, pink Gonopora, is that what it's called? And it's fine. I don't know why I put it back there, to be honest. I, I just, I, I'm, I'm terrible at placing corals. It's doing okay. I, I just would have liked to seen it a bit more. But I have another frag I can put somewhere else. And then, good news here with this Blasto, it is getting all sorts of new heads. Let's see if you can see them over here. I bought it when it had two or three heads. Let's see, can we see it? And now it has, I don't know, you can't see them, but that dark patch down the bottom has a ton. Let's see if I can, yeah, see, see them there? There's like four heads down there. So the Blasto is doing great. The only problem I have with this Blasto is it just matches the color too much. And so I can barely, barely even see it here. All right, last two corals here. Um, it's not an A-can. It's not an A-can. Favia, it's a fa some sort of Favia, right? It's fine. Very slow growing. Very slow growing. Remember, I had a, a uh, what did I have here? I had a mushroom coral, but the flow was too high, so I had to move that. And then, take a peek. Take a peek at my Zoa garden. Good learning experience. First Zoa garden I've ever had. I have been dealing with a ton. Not a ton, like... <laughs> that was a huge exaggeration. Like five or six um, different Aptasias. They keep coming in. And I, and, and I started using that Aptasia wand, and that didn't seem to do a dang thing. And I would find new Aptasias. So now I've just gone back to my Aptasia X that I use, and that seems to work really well. It's been an interesting experience for me seeing which ones grow. And I don't know the names of any of these, but this pink one right here doesn't grow at all. I mean, I don't think there's any new heads in the months it's been in here. But this these other ones here have been growing gangbusters. And you can still see, you can still see the rock, you can still see the frag plugs, but it is definitely coming along nicely and a good first experiment. And this rock will be covered eventually. Well, that's it guys. I know it's not up to my usual editing standards, but I figured an update on the tanks was better than nothing. So until next time, be well, happy reefing. We'll see you again soon. Take care.